CES week is over, so it's time to get back into the loop. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. The event was pretty great. Lots of new cases, tons of new AMD CPUs for the mobile segment, and a promise to deliver Ryzen 4000 this year. As for the competition, and that's Intel, they decided to not share any information on their next generation of CPUs for desktops. Not only that, but when it comes to the actual show floor, motherboard vendors apparently had LGA 1200 boards available, but Intel asked those companies to not showcase them. This information comes from German website computerbase.de. According to their report, several motherboard manufacturers reported that the next gen flagship CPU, the 10900K, could pull as much as 300 watts at max loads. We already know that it has a 250 watt TDP at power limit 2, and with the usual motherboard multi-core enhancements that increase or remove the PL2 time limit, it's not super surprising. By the way, I know it's a 250 watt TDP and not the actual power draw, but TDP and power consumption are usually very close to each other. Just ask Steve from GN. And while it's no excuse, it's worth mentioning that the 10 core Comet Lake CPU will bring every single core to 4.9 gigahertz. Sure, the IPC is not that great and the power is bad, but hey, you take your win where you can, Intel. This absence at CES will definitely put a wrench on the rumors that those CPUs were supposed to come out next month. At this point, it really is all about pricing. If Intel can manage to tuck its tail between its legs and admit that they need to be more value oriented, then they might have a chance. I'd put the 10900K at a max of $450. Any higher and people will just go for the 3900X and at that price it would probably kick the 3800X's ass, so there would be a value there. Not a big upgrade path, but it could still be value. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Also with Intel, we got our first look at a discrete XEDG1 in traditional GPU form factor. It looks kind of cute. Don't expect it to be in your PC though, since these are development units strictly designed for testing purposes. At least we got an idea of Intel's design language for future consumer cards, which I hope will come out this year. Moving on to some AMD news, an unidentified GPU has been spotted beating a 2080 Ti. You heard that right, a Reddit user by the name of Munch Charles posted a screenshot of the leaderboard in OpenVR. As you can see, at the same resolution, with the same headset, this unidentified GPU beats the top performing 2080 Ti by a whopping 17% and at an average of 30% for most 2080 Ti's. Of course, the biggest question is, well, what is is this GPU. First, we have to take a look at the CPU. Apparently, this OPN code corresponds to a variant of the Ryzen 4800H engineering sample. If this is a pre-production laptop, it kind of eliminates the possibility of an older dual GPU config, so it's likely a GPU in an external enclosure or something like that. Now, if this is the Nvidia killer that's been rumored left and right, it's a pretty healthy performance boost, but the thing is, it could also be an external Nvidia GPU. I don't exactly know how OpenVR leaderboards work, but sometimes when there's an APU and a GPU in the same system, a benchmark will recognize the APU only as the main graphics card while using the GPU's performance. It could also just be a completely busted benchmark. Also in AMD news, we have something that kind of slipped through the cracks while CES was happening. It's also something you guys ask about quite often. AMD's B550 and A520 motherboards. When are they coming in? Well, bad news. Apparently, they haven't started making them yet. Back in November, thanks to a Brainbox interview with the product manager of the company, we heard that Biostar had the motherboards ready. Well, shortly after that, Biostar corrected the interviewer saying that it was incorrect. And now the China Times reports that Asmedia will only start production of the budget-friendly B550 and A320 chipsets in Q1 of this year. So no dice on it releasing this quarter. And even then, Q2 is pushing it. I would guesstimate late Q2 or or Q3. And if AMD decides to release Zen 3 in Q3, you better believe that they'll wait for a simultaneous release. In free games, the Epic Game Store just updated its list. Right now, you can get Sunderer for free until the 16th, and after that, Horus will become available. Link down below. Horus? That sounds weird when I say it. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.